looking good, Pa. What are you all finished with them now? Yep, I got them all done. So uh, what are you planning on doing with all these machines now that you got them all finished? I'm gonna open my own pachinko parlor right here at our house. What? How's that gonna work? What it's gonna do is people are gonna come here, they're gonna buy balls, and when they win, they're gonna win tarot apparel. Just think about it. It costs about $20 for a shirt. They're gonna end up spending about $100 to win that $20 shirt. <laughs> yeah, well, if you say so. Yeah, we could sell drinks and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Well, wait a minute. Isn't that illegal to be selling booze? And isn't that some form of gambling? It's only illegal if you get caught. <laughs> I guess you got a point there. All right. Let's uh, let's open for business. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Bring that, Pop. It's like a good idea after all. You know what, Junior? We've taken in over $800 so far, and I haven't even given out one sticker yet. <laughs> Somebody's at the door. More money, it looks like. Go let that sucker, I mean gambler, in. <laughs> uh, this guy. What do you want, Jurgenstein? I want to come in. I want to play. Get out of here. Beat it. Come on. I want to win big. Let me in. You got money? Yeah, I got money. All right. I guess you can come in. All right. Look at this. Wow. Oh, this is awesome. It's pretty filled up in here, so right. you're going to have to come in the back with me. Here, follow me. Oh, all right. Yeah, no problem. Oh, look at this. There's one back here you can use. Oh, single loader. All right. Yeah, don't be trying anything funny, all right? Oh, I need to win that winter hat. I'm freezing. Come on. How are you ladies doing? Oh, okay. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Down to my last ball. Better make this one count. Come on, jackpot. Oh, no. Nothing. Well, got my own little supply here. Fuck, you're red-handed! Oh, oh, oh. I, I paid for those balls. Counterfeit balls? You're out of here. Oh, get out. Oh, no, no. I paid for those, I swear. I caught them trying to use counterfeit balls, Pa. No, no. You got two choices, Jergenstein. Junior can take you in the shop and crush your hands in the vice. Or you can leave. Uh, I'll, I'll leave. I'll All leave. Right, throw them out. Uh, Gladly. Oh, I have Jurgenstein. Don't come back. All right, I see you're only a few balls okay. away from winning a free sticker. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, hey, Slippers. Come to cash in your winnings? Uh, yeah. I think I finally got enough to get that coffee mug. Oh, okay, well, let's see what you got here. Looks like you're one ball short. Uh, what? One ball short? Sorry. Oh, uh, come on. Can't you cut me a break here? No, if I cut you a break, I gotta cut everybody else a break. Uh, get back out there and get gaming. I've been playing for six hours. I just want that coffee mug. Not too bad. You're one ball short. Uh, Beat it. All right, just give me a stick here. All right, which one do you want? Uh, give me that junior one. Hair. And today we're going to do another feature of Terrell's toys and this is Terrell's latest toy. These here vintage pachinko machines. Now let me tell you a little story about these pachinko machines because you're probably wondering well why is Terrell so interested in these pachinko machines? Because when I was a little kid my parents bought me a pachinko machine. That's right. Back in the day, in the early 70s, you could buy these machines. And you know where you could buy them at? You could buy them at Sears, Kmart, and Venture. Remember the old Venture stores? Yeah, that's where my parents bought mine. And you could buy them relatively cheap back then. I think they were like 30 or $35. So for one Christmas, when I was a little boy, my parents bought me a pachinko machine. So I had that machine, had it for years, 
And then as I got older, I uh, built it into the wall of one of the houses we lived in. And then when we moved, I couldn't take the machine with me because it would have left a big hole in the wall. Because I was a dummy and didn't think, you know what, maybe I should build a cabinet and then hang it on the wall like a picture. No, I built it in the wall like they did in the pachinko parlors in Japan. And uh, when we moved, I left the machine there. So back in November, I was on an online auction site and I seen five of these machines come up on auction. And it brought back all those memories. So I bid on the machines and I got them. I got five of them. So out of the five, I got four of them working. And this is one of them. This is the oldest one out of the five that I have. This is a single loader machine. This was made probably uh, last time it was made in 69. So what you do is you just put the ball in there and then you give it a flare. Now sometimes it'll come back because you know this is an old machine. And then if you get a jackpot when you go into one of these pockets here or you get it in the middle It'll make this tulip up. But of course, me being Terrell, I had to uh, spruce it up a little bit. These machines were a little weak on lights. It only had like two lights. This machine had a light in the back for when you got a jackpot. And there's another light up here in the corner that comes on when you run out of balls. When you run out of balls in the hopper up there, this light comes on and then a little thing comes across here to block this off so you can't put any more balls in. And then in Japan an attendant would come by, fill the machine with balls and then you could play again. So I added more lights because it was weak on lights. Didn't have a lot of lights. So I added a bunch of lights behind it. I added a light to this pocket. And I added a light to this little window here. Now from what I understand, because I talked to some of these guys online that are pachinko experts, they told me that this feature was only made for one year. So this is kind of a rare machine. And from what I understand, this is like a foul ball pocket. And balls will accumulate in there. So when you get balls that accumulate in there, you hit this little lever here, and it'll give you a jackpot. Jackpot! You lucky! You win! There's your dinner! Oh, but this machine talks because Terrell made it talk. I added my own little talking to it. Oh, and then I cast out it. Look at it, it's coming alive here. It's alive, it's alive. So you're probably wondering what I did here. So what I did is. I went online and I bought me one of those greeting card talking things, you know, that you can put in greeting cards and you can record your own personal message. And I mounted it to the bottom of this computer speaker. This is a computer speaker. And this is a little button so you can record. So I can record whatever message I want. And this is the little microphone. So you hit this button. And then you can record your message up to about 30 seconds. You can find these on eBay. They're real cheap. They're like five, six, seven bucks for this little device. So I mounted it to the speaker because the speaker it came with was weak. So I thought, you know what? Maybe if I mount it to a computer speaker, it'll be louder. And of course it was. And then it's got these three replaceable batteries. So what I'm going to do in the future, I haven't done it yet. Each one of these batteries is a volt and a half, so that's four and a half volts. And a cell phone charger is about five volts. So I might wire in a cell phone charger, like a little uh, transformer, so I can plug it in. Because eventually these batteries it will go dead. But I've been playing this machine for quite a while and it keeps, you know, keeps talking. 
So that's what I did. I wired that up and I got me a little plug here that plugs into it so it'll talk to you. So now let's go inside the machine and look at what I did here. And right, let me take this out. You know what else I did? I put a little bread pan up in here with a hole in it. So I can fill the balls on the top without opening the machine. I did that too on this single loader. And I made a cabinet, custom cabinet for it. So what I did is I took the existing cabinet and I just added wood to it. So this is the existing cabinet, which was this wide, and this is white oak that I added. I glued it to it to make it deeper so I could hang it on the wall like a pitcher. And then I put the switch for my light on the side here. Now this machine, if you would have saw it when I got it, somebody had spray painted this or brush painted it blue, so I had to strip all that off. And they painted the sides red and I stripped all that off. The chrome was all damaged, so I sandblasted it and I painted it, spray painted it. And then this has got a glass window on it. This isn't plastic, this is glass. But I don't know if somebody did that or if they came that way with glass. I'm not sure. But this has got a glass window in it. But these are neat machines. And then I gutted, took the lock apart because I didn't have a lock or a key for the lock. So I gutted the lock and made my own key so I can open it. And this is what this one looks like inside. So I went and got another butterfly switch for this online. Now, you may not know this, but there's a lot of guys that do pachinko restoration online. So if you go to uh, pachinkoman.com, he's got a list of different people across the country that can help you with getting parts. So I went to pachinkoman.com because I needed a part for this one. And I found Pachinko Boy. And Pachinko Boy had the part I needed. And he happens to be here in Indiana. So he sold me the part I needed and he gave me a bunch of information on the machine and I was able to fix this machine. But again, like I said, it was weak on lights. So I added a bunch of lights. So if you look back here, you can see I added all these LEDs. These are these 12 inch LED strips, which I'll show you later for the other machines that I added to kind of backlight the machine. That's why I got all these lights in here. Behind these little pockets and the little blue flapper there. That's this. And then for this window, and here, I use what's called these surface mount LEDs. And I can show you that right here. That's a surface mount LED. It's real tiny, and it's got adhesive on it, and it sticks. And I'll show you some of them when we talk about the other machine. And that lights up that pocket. And then here's that butterfly switch down here to make it talk. So I rigged that up down there. So then when that makes a contact, it'll talk. Quick, quick! You win the jackpot! You lucky! You win! There's your dinner! Yeah, that's me! I'm talking that, yeah! And then the other butterfly switch, here's the switch here. So when you run out of balls, and then here's the jackpot butterfly switch here, they call it. Now, one thing about these butterfly switches, you gotta get them contacts real close to each other. And you do that by bending on those little, little tabs. Cause the closer you have it together, when you get a jackpot, the longer the light will stay on. 
So you don't want those little contacts far apart. You kind of want them close together. And then here's a, the other light. And then that's got an LED in there too. And I'll show you those LEDs that I use too and the company I get them from. Same with here. There's an LED in there too for the jackpot light. So this is when you run out of balls. This light will come on. And then this is the jackpot light. These machines are pretty, pretty basic. They look kind of complicated, but once you figure out how they operate, it's just a bunch of levers and, and rods and stuff. They're pretty simple. And you can buy them. You can still buy them today. You can buy them on eBay. And they're fun little machines. So there's a, there's the single loader. Let's go in the other room and look at the rapid loader. So here's another machine. This is made by Nishin, Mission Jing or Mission Ling or something. I can't say it because I'm not Japanese. But this is another machine. There's a bunch of companies that made them. And from what I understand, no two backgrounds of these machines were alike. And they made thousands of these machines. So here's another one that I redid and made a cabinet for. And then of course, here's the switch for this one that I added. Rocker switch with an LED in there. And again, I got these switches on eBay. I think you could buy, I forget how many, 20 of them. And they were real cheap, these little rocker switches with the LED in there. So this one I went a little different. I got these 12 inch red, blue, green. LED strips with adhesive on them and they do all kinds of different flashing and dancing on there because again these machines were weak on lights you know the technology wasn't there back in the 70s and that's where this machine is from the 70s these rapid loaders are from the 70s and the reason they're rapid loaders is because they got a tray with the balls and see, you can shoot many balls. Not like that single loader where you can only pull one ball at a time. See, and there's a jackpot. Now, did you notice when that ball went in here and this tulip, this tulip opened and it opened that one. Same over here. If a ball went in there, it would open this tulip and this one. And then you can get balls down the middle. So originally, this only had the jackpot lights, which were right here. And again, when you run out of balls in the hopper, this red light comes on, and then a little lever comes across and blocks this from playing. So like if you ran out of balls in the parlor, it would lock you out so you wouldn't get jackpots until an attendant came and filled the machine back up with balls. So that's how that worked. So again, I needed to add more lights because I'm playing these machines and I'm like, there's not enough lights in there. I need more lights. So I added these red, blue, and green flashing lights. And then I also got one of these strips here, which again, I bought real cheap. These are 12 inch long and these are just white LEDs. So there's a, one of these strips is up there too. So I got the red, blue, and green strips, which I bought cheap on eBay. And then I got one of these to kind of shed some light on the face of it. And then I put LEDs in there and these lenses to make these light up. And then I also put lights back behind here when we'll open this up. There was no light in the center. And I thought, well, that kind of sucks. And it's got like what's called an island kind of uh, graphic in the back, which I had to recreate because the one back there was ruined. It's got a little island, you know, with a palm tree on it and the ocean. So I put a yellow one in there because it kind of looks like sunlight, the yellow one. So this is a fun game. And there's our jackpot light. Woo! And each time you hit a jackpot, you win 15 balls. That's what you get. 
each one of these. Again, had no key for it, had to gut the lock, took the lock apart, took all the tumblers out. And this one I was able to get a master key from a master lock that I had that fit in there. And now I can open it up. And we'll take a peek inside. Now this one is wired a lot more differently than the other ones. This one I took apart and put the LEDs in there separately to light up the little pockets back there and back here. And I used those surface mount LEDs and I'm going to show you one of them. This is what a surface mount LED looks like. And I get these from a company called Osnium. Osnium.com. And they're pretty cheap, about $3.50 a piece. And they come in a bunch of different colors. This is a yellow one. Now if you notice, this yellow one, it's got some kind of big resistor soldered into it. So that kind of became a problem when I was mounting these on certain units. And that must be in there to give it that yellow. And sometimes when you're mounting these, this, this could get in the way. So what I ended up doing is, I ended up buying the white ones. The white ones don't have this in there. It's just this surface mount with the flat ribbon and then it's got a long piece of wire on it. So you, this isn't in there at all. And of course it's got the sticky back on it. You peel that off and you can stick it wherever you want. But I needed these in different colors. So I'm like, Carol, what are you gonna do? You need that flat, tiny LED, but this thing is in the way. So this is what I did. I bought the white ones. And then I took Mr. Paint Pen. And I just took a yellow paint pen and colored the lens yellow. <laughs> yeah! Now it's a yellow LED. Red. Paint it red, it's a red LED. Blue. Paint it blue and it's a blue LED. So that's what I did. I just bought the white ones and just colored the lenses. Or like I said, you can go to Osmium site and you can buy them in those different colors. And another thing I did is I got that uh, silver tape. You know, that's that duct tape for like uh, duct work. It's foil tape. Well, it's got, you know, reflective properties to it because it will reflect light. So if you notice, all this is all that reflective tape back there. And that helps to reflect the light through the pockets. So if you're into these Pachinko machines, these are little tips and tricks that I learned. Here's the existing wiring that came with the machine and then I just rewired it. Here's the little butterfly switch for when we run out of balls. Now I know you're saying, Terrell, you said that you should get those real close together. Well, you should get it close together on the jackpot switch. This switch is different because when it runs out of balls, it makes contact and that red light comes on and it's gonna stay on because you ran out of balls. Jackpot, you know, you want it real close, so when it trips it, it kinda stays on a little bit longer. And also, this has another light down here for when you ran out of balls, that would come on. Now these I also get from Osnium, and these are the six millimeter super flux, that's what these are called. Now that's what I used in place of the regular light bulbs that the machine had, but they're LEDs. So when you go to Osnium's site, you're gonna wanna get the surface mount and you're gonna wanna get the super flux LEDs. Now for here, since it had a red lens, 
I put a red LED because it gives it more depth. Now this also has a red lens down here. So I could have did the same thing and just painted this one red. But I just left it clear. And that goes in there. So when you run out of balls, this lights up down in there. Now this is another thing on these machines. There was no light in here. And I thought, you know, you got this little window here. You might want to have that lit up. Because that's where your balls are. So that's what I did. Added one of those flat surface mount LEDs in that pocket. So that's where that wire is coming through. You know, and this is all wood, so all I do is drill a hole to have it come out. So that's what's nice about those little surface mount ones. You can mount them anywhere. Like I said, there's, there's one, two, three, four, five of those little surface mount ones behind there that I got mounted. Oh yeah, and one behind there too. So it adds a lot to it, just by putting them lights in there. Now these little nails that they bounce off of, you know, these are brass. And on a lot of the machines, you know, they polish them when they restore them, these guys. Well, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna paint the heads of them, add a little more color to it. So I changed that up. Now this particular machine, when I got it, this was missing, this tray. And I had to find that tray. So again, went to Pachinko Man, found this guy, Magic Dan, out on the uh, East Coast in New York, and Magic Dan had a tray. But this tray wasn't that color. So I painted it because the chrome, this chrome was good. I was able to polish it out, but this chrome window, it was all pitted and ruined. So I painted it. And then when I got this uh, tray from Magic Dan, I took it all apart and painted it too. Painted it silver and painted it blue. And then cleaned the rest of this up. Sanded the face. All the wood, revarnished it, and then they made this cabinet. Now this cabinet's made out of white oak, again, like the single loader, but it's white oak with black stain. I put a black stain on it. Isn't that a nice, nice look, that black stain? And then since these pachinko machines have black on this little ledge down here and here, which is black lacquer paint. I went ahead and did the front of it in black lacquer. So this little outline here, this little edge, is all black lacquer to match the black lacquer of the original machine. And then the rest of the wood is black stain. I kind of like that look. And then of course these machines got ashtrays on them. Because, you know, back in the 70s, that smoking was big. So they all got ashtrays. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this tray here. So when you're, when you're winning and you've got a lot of balls in here, you wanna cash out. That's what this lever's for, cashing out. And that sends the balls down here and then you can scoop them out. So you can cash out and go to another machine. So that's this one. The Nishin Ling Jing Jin. Nish and Jin. All right, let's move on to this one. All right, now the next machine is a Sankyo. Not a Sanyo, a Sankyo. And this one's different, as you can see. Like I said, the backgrounds are all different. This one's in a lot better shape than some of the other ones. I was able to clean up all the chrome. It cleaned up good. 
It's all original. This one I didn't need any parts for. All I had to do was clean it real good and put some balls in it and it worked. But again, I wanted to add more lights to it because it only had one jackpot light here and when you ran out of balls here. But the way it was wired when I got it, this was the jackpot light and this was when you ran out of balls light. And I'm like, I don't like that. It should be the other way around. When you run out of balls, like all the other machines, it's up here when you get a jackpot here. So I took this apart and I put a surface mount LED in every one of these. And I tried to find one in each color. Put a red one here, orange one here, yellow one here, yellow one here. And whatever color I didn't have, I either used a clear one or I colored with the paint pen the face of the LED to make it light up. And then of course I added a light in that little pocket again. And then it's got the little tray, you know, the little dump tray like they all have in the ashtray. And then I added some LEDs to shine up the background. Now I got inside there and added a surface mount LED behind there. But for these, I used those strips again to light up the back of it. Had to gut the key, because I didn't have a key, so I had to gut it. This one's got a different key. This one's got like a, a barrel key on it, like for like an alarm system kind of key. So I had to go online, find a key, and then I gutted it, took all the tumblers out so I could open it. See how I mounted these? Stick on ones back here. But these I mounted with, held it on with electrical tape, which I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change that to that, that silver tape that you use on that ductwork to hold this on. But that's what it is. This whole background is green, so it kind of gives that green feeling. See, there's a surface mount LED that I've got right there, which is for this, shines through there. This one has an actual LED. I don't know if you can see it through that hole, but you can see it that I went right in the center. And then these is one of these. So you can see that green, it picks up that green back there. So this one's got a little bit of LEDs on it, but not a lot. And then of course they've got a little, all of them got this so you can open the front. So you can open this up. And then there's usually a lever here so you can swing this panel out. But if I swing that panel out, some of the balls are gonna fall out. So this one's nice. Like I said, when you get a jackpot, all of these light up. So watch. Woo! Jackpot! So the way a lot of these work is, if you get one in this tool up here, the ball will roll by and open the other tool up. So usually when you get a ball in there, both of these open up. And you get a ball in there, both of these open up. You get a ball in here, it'll come down and it'll hit these, and if the ball rolls to this side, it'll open these two up. If it rolls to this side, it'll open these two up, and if it rolls straight down the middle, it'll open this one up in the middle. So that's usually how that works. And again, you get 15 balls. And then there's that 12 inch strip light, but I put two of them under here to kind of light up the face of it. I've seen guys online that do all kinds of stuff. I've seen a guy online that had a pachinko machine that had these red, blue, green ones that were all mounted in the face here. And when you get a jackpot, the whole thing would light up red, blue, green like it's flashing now. 
and would flash. I seen another guy that built one that when you get jackpots, it would give you the balls and it would give you a piece of candy. So, if you're interested in these machines, there's a forum you can go to called Patchy Talk. And that's where all them guys are on there that are into these machines. These machines are cool. You can buy them. You can buy them used on eBay. So if you're interested in getting one, these are pretty cool to have in like your man cave or in your rec room, you know, if you got a, a room with a bar and stuff. These are, these are nice machines. I like them. I liked them when I was a kid. I like them more now. And like I said, this one's my favorite one. Now this cabinet is made out of dark walnut. I made this one out of. Now when I looked online at the guys that were making these different cabinets, you know, they were just square cabinets a lot of them made and you mounted them on the wall and you know some of them they had freestanding cabinets where it would stand on the floor where you could move it around but I noticed none of them had anywhere you could set like a drink so I'm thinking hey if you're smoking you're drinking too <laughs> so that's why I extended mine so you could you could put a cocktail there on each side and then you can mount it to the wall like a piece of art that's why I added these cleats, these wooden cleats, to the top and near the bottom, so you can mount it to the wall, like a piece of art, like a like a picture. And then these balls, you can buy these balls on eBay. I was buying these. You can get all different uh, quantities. You can get 250. You can get 100. I was buying 500 at a time. I think I bought about 3,000 of these balls for these four machines. Because I want them full to the max. These machines hold anywhere from 250, you know, is the minimum you want to use to play, to 750. So 500 is like in the middle, but I got mine loaded up to the 750. I want the maximum I can get in there. And then also on eBay, you can buy these bins, these plastic bins that hold the balls. So when you need more balls, you just open up the game, pull it out. And then of course I've got transformers, you know, little transformers to power them, 12 volts. Because you got to remember, these were in a pachinko parlor, so they had a, you know, a voltage system that ran every machine in the parlor so when you get one of these you got to hook up your own juice to it so I mounted little jacks little four millimeter four and a half millimeter jacks and the sockets you can buy the little female sockets I bought them on eBay now a couple of these machines have uh, Transformers that I had from all the appliances which you may have hanging around But like for this machine because I got these red blue green LEDs they require more voltage So I had to buy these uh, These bigger Transformers which were only they were only like six or seven bucks And again, here's my jack for the transformer and then you know I got the cord here which I kind of wanted to keep you know when I'm opening and closing it I got a spring hook to it goes into the existing wiring so each time I open and close it pulls the wire in and away so little things you got to think of But at least I got a switch. You know, you can play it without the power on. This is basically how one looks. Without the light. You know, the only difference would be it would light up here. You know, if this was a bone stock one. But don't the lights make it look so much better. Look at that. 
that I'm winning. Pretty cool, huh? All right, one more machine, then we're done. And that's this one here. This was the last one that I finished. Now this one's a Sanyo. Remember Sanyo? I remember I had a Sanyo stereo in my car back in the 80s. Did the same thing like the other ones. Added the red, blue, green. Added another clear 12 inch strip to help with the lights across the front. It's got the unloader tray like they all have. This one's got a bigger ashtray. So if you're a heavy smoker, you can get more butts in there. Now this one I did a little different. I gutted, I took the lock out all together and I put the on off switch where the lock went. And then I made my own system to open it without a key. Again, got the 12 inch clear LED strips. And as you can see, that's that foil tape for that duct work that I used. Now this one, to get some of the light behind these pockets, I actually drilled holes in this cover so the light can go through. So there's, a, there's four LEDs behind this cover on that 12 inch strip. I drilled a hole in the cover so the light can shine through. I drilled a hole on the side, I drilled a hole here. And then the rest is just reflecting off of there. Under here is a surface mount LED by itself to shine down there. Now this one, again, weak on lights. Jackpot light, run out of ball light. That was it. So, playing the game, and it's like, you know what? Kind of weak on lights there. This center needs the light up. Took it apart, put a surface mount LED back in here. Had to drill some holes, but I got it in there. And then here, no lights. So I took this off, because this is, when you hit a ball up in here, this thing, watch, this thing here. See, it hits it. If a ball happens to go in there, it falls down and comes back down into this tray. So I took this part off, had those brass nails that hold it in there, took it off, put screws back in so I could take it off, put a surface mount LED in each one of them, and then ran the wires down drilled a hole, brought them out here. So this has got quite a bit of wiring going on in here. It's got quite a bit. Here's our transformer again. Bigger transformer. It's like a five, five amp transformer. It's like seven or eight bucks. Lit up this again. So now when you get a jackpot, this lights up in the middle, this lights up, these two light up. When you run out of balls, that red one lights up. Let's see if we can get it to light up. See if I can get a jackpot. I like this game. This is another one of my favorite ones. Painted all the brads, you know, all the little nails. Painted them again. On the Sankyo, I didn't tell you, but those I polished. Here we go. See, there's a jackpot. They all lit up. Now our tulips open, because I got it in Mr. Owlhead. Well, these aren't tulips, these are swans. Got it in Mr. Owlhead, the swans open up. Get it down the middle, this opens up. This will close. If you get one in the middle, it'll kick it to this side or that side, which will open the swan. So now we got a swan open. We should be able to get a jackpot pretty easy. There 
There we go. There we go. All lined up. Yeah, that's triple. Woo! See, and we ran out of balls. See, now we ran out of balls. Now the red light came on. I'll still be able to play a little bit in case I get more jackpots. But then that's it. See, now it locked me out. Now I'm locked out. Until I fill this up again. And then the light will go off. And of course, you know, I got so many balls in here that some of them spill out. But who cares? And then I also put 12 inch LED strip up here to light up this pocket of this cabinet I made and to light it up down here. And they're all wired into the switch. So when I turn the switch off, all the lights go off. When I turn the switch on, they all come on. And if you notice, I put Japanese money back there. Now I went online and took those images, resized them, and laminated it. So I could stick it in there. And then I did the same down here because this is a little taller. So I had to make the money bigger. And then I laminated it. Then I took a four inch hole saw and I drilled down a little bit from my drink holder and then I had to chisel this out and smooth it out and then I went online, took these images of these Japanese beer and then uh, resized it, printed them out on my printer on some canvas paper. That's what I use for the money too. Canvas paper. I didn't use regular copy paper because it's different. And then I got a laminating machine and I laminated it. You can buy that laminating machine real cheap at Walmart. 20 bucks. And you can laminate 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So I laminated that. So I went and got two different Japanese beers and made these little four inch coasters, laminated them, and put them in there. Now this cabinet is made out of cherry wood. Now all these woods on these cabinets are all from local trees, because I got some customers here that, uh, that are woodworking guys and they have sawmills. So they're taking local trees, oak, white oak, walnut, cherry, and they're making lumber, and I call them up and I go, hey, I need some, you know, one by, one by eights or one by whatever I needed the whip for, one by seven, one by six. Uh, how many feet you need, Terrell? I tell them, I buy the wood from them, and then I build these cabinets. So this is all local wood, that white oak, that uh, dark walnut, and this is cherry, Indiana cherry. Turned out nice. This one cabinet I made a little different than the other ones. Added a little shelf in there. So, that's all there is to my vintage pachinko machines. I hope you like it. I hope it sparked an interest in you. Maybe you'll go online and try to find one of these machines. Like I said, you can buy them already restored and done already, or you can buy them, clean them up, fix them up yourself. So you need to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! There's your dinner! Vintage Pachinko Machines! I know it ain't a lawnmower, but hey, I'm into other stuff too, you know, not just lawnmowers and fixing engines. I got a lot of different interests. Lawnmowers just happen to be one of them. Operation. I had to shut it down, Junior. 
I got all these lawsuits filed against me from them gamblers. Bunch of them said they got carpal tunnel from flicking the lever on the pachinko machine, and two of them said they got seizures from the flashing lights off the machines. Oh, I'm in a lot of trouble here, I think. We're gonna have to go back to fix the lawnmowers. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty serious, Pa. I knew this was a bad idea. Well, if you need me, I'll be inside playing with my RC car. Oh, down to my last ball. Better make this one count. Come on, jackpot, yeah! Jackpot! I don't need to use them balls in my pocket now. <laughs>